what could OTB Red Baron value raise? Anything that he didn't raise before, so sets. But of course, anything like Jack-10, Jack-4 suited, Jack-5 suited. But the big question you need to think about is what would OTB potentially bluff raise with? Hey guys, what's up? This is Uri for Gorilla Poker. This video is going to be a high stakes hand history review. We're going to have a comeback from a big, big player from the past, OTB Red Baron. For those of you who don't know him, this was the best six max player in the world for a fairly long time until he went into semi-retirement. Exciting to, to see some hands from him. Let's dive into the action. Okay, so 5100. JM Big Joe raises to 220. It's folded to Mosh Machine. In the big blind, do three bets to 1100, roughly four and a half X, which is a fairly good size. We see a flop of 1088 Rainbow. And here, Mosh Machine bets roughly half pot. Now, just to give you guys some background about the situation, when you see a board like 1088, first thing that should step into your head is okay. The three better missed this with all of his offsuit range, right? All the ace king, the ace queen, the king queen, the ace jack, all those hands that three bet from the big blind versus UTG missed. You're not really three betting down to ace 10 or king 10 from the big blind. So when all of your unpaired hands miss, that generally means that you can't bet everything. You want to size up a bit and, and you have to mix. So, so this is the correct sizing. And Mosh Machine will be, you know, betting some ace king, some ace queen, some king queen suited, most of his over pairs, and have a, have a real checking range, but just something to have in your head about the situation. So he gets called here. JM Big Joe will continue just a bunch of stuff, you know, backdoor flush draws, ace king high, ace queen high, queen jack, any pair probably. Turn nine of diamonds goes check check. River nine of spades, Mosh Machine bets one third pot. Again, always good to think what does a bet imply in terms of hand strength. So which hand strength would want to bet one third pot? Here, given a board texture, I imagine something like pocket jacks, pocket queens, maybe pocket kings. Those are hands that, that feel like, you know, you still might get called by ace high or, or a 10 sometimes, but you're not really pushing much equity. If, if the bet becomes big, you're not really getting called by worse. You know, with the eight pairing, the nine pairing, pocket tens is a set, queen jack is a straight. So if you have queens like water, you're really getting called by. So one third pot bet, Jam Big Joe goes all in and Mosh Machine calls. The interesting thing about this situation is that in theory, uh, when Mosh Machine goes one third, he's going to have a few traps in there and just a ton of really thin value bets. Most people in JM Big Joe's shoes, they won't even consider raising. Which hands would you even consider raising with is a good question. As, as a bluff, I mean, of course, if you have a boat, you, you will raise, but say you have ace king, would you ever even think of raising in, in this spot? The interesting thing about the situation is that it's actually a fairly good spot to bluff raise because most people don't put the traps in the small bet range. They just have bluffs and thin value bets. And bluff raising works pretty well. It's kind of a leveling spot where what would JM Big Joe actually bluff raise with? And if I'm thinking about it, the main like first hand that jumps to mind for me for a bluff raise is actually pocket sevens. Feel like pocket sevens would call flop, check back turn. On the river, the board is double paired, so you got counterfeited. It feels like you have straight blockers. Of course, you don't really, because don't think having a straight really matters when, when the board is like this and in these positions. It feels like pocket sevens, pocket sixes could be hands that tempt you to, to bluff shove. So I, I imagine maybe those would, would do it at some frequency. And yeah, hands get turned face up. JM Big Joe just has the super nuts, quad nines. And Mosh Machine has, I think, a, a very thin river value, but Jack 10 suited, which he decided to call. Now, how do you decide whether or not to call on the river? There are actually a few approaches. Of course, if you have some opinion about the spot in your opponent, like you say, oh, I, I don't think this guy has it in him to bluff, you just fold everything. But if you don't, then any hand that feels like a reasonable bluff catcher, and Jack-10 definitely applies in that sense, you just kind of randomize. Right? So you call some of the time, you fold some of the time, you look at your pot odds because you don't want to always fold, you don't want to always call. And of course, that's if you give your opponent a lot of respect. The less respect you have for him, the more you should be able to make this decision on your own and not rely on any random number generator. 
Okay, second hand we have red Italian limping from middle position. Dex isolates the button to $300, red Italian calls. First thing to notice is Dex is isolating to only $300. Now some people will isolate to a different sizing depending on how strong their hand is. And this is actually a really cool thing because a lot of professional players will always open to the same size because they don't want to give away their hand. But when they're isolating a recreational, actually they have mixed incentives, right? Because against the recreational, and anyone limping we're going to assume it is a recreational, though, though of course I don't know for sure. So against the recreational, you have an incentive to size according to your hand strength a bit. Like if you have suited connector, maybe you want to isolate smaller. If you have ace-king or kings, maybe you want to isolate bigger. But that gives away information to the rest of the table. So you kind of have mixed incentives, which is actually a really cool thing in No Limit Hold'em. But of course, there are only two, pe two people left behind who can do anything about it. So, you know, question it, does Dex always isolate the button to 300 or, or, or is he going to have kind of a 300, three big blind type of hand? Something to think about. Also something to think about is let's say Dex actually does have a few sizes and, and this indicates a weaker hand. What would be the best way to adjust from the blinds, for example? Like come up with a coherent strategy. You don't want to just three bet him every time because he's weak, but think a bit deeper than that. Okay, so we get the Jack Jack Deuce Rainbow Flop, Red Italian Checks, Dex bets 300. Now, very dry board. After you've isolated, the general idea is going to be that you probably see bet pretty much everything on Jack Jack Deuce Rainbow. Here we see a min raise from Red Italian and Dex calls. Here's also kind of a situation where a GTO and in practice are, are a bit at odds. In theory, you should be continuing extremely wide against the min raise. But in theory, you probably shouldn't be isolating the range you're isolating. You don't know the other guy's range. And there are tons and tons of assumptions that go, come into play when you're playing against uh, unknowns. And I think like the biggest assumption for me is that the check min raise on Jack Jack Deuce Rainbow probably doesn't have any real bluffs. That, that would be my assumption. I think the people who like bluff check raising would not min check raise. They would go back bigger. The min check raise to me implies... It could be the super nuts, but more likely the player has hit the board in some way. I don't know if he has pocket sixes, pocket queens, if he has trips or ace deuce or whatever. He could have a bunch of hands, but he's hit in some way. And beyond hitting, he doesn't really know much about bet sizing. But he's not one of those like aggro push you around types. He's more just a beginner who's, who's just learning the game, which goes along with a limp, goes along with a min raise. And against this type of player, the, the assumption should be that there is actually a fairly decent chance that he has two pair or better and a not very high chance he is actually bluffing. So I, I would actually continue a lot tighter than, than you're supposed to in theory. And in theory, he should be bluffing, you know, like 10, 8 of diamonds and queen, 8 of hearts and, and hands like that. And you can float very wide, but I'm not sure that, that it's actually going to work like that. So turn 4 of diamonds, red Italian bets 75% pot. Here, you know, in, in theory, you should have trips or better in, in practice. Who knows? Uh, Dex calls. River ace. Red Italian checks. Dex decides to go for a pot-sized bet. Really interesting spot in the sense that you would expect, right, Red Italian to have either trips uh, or if not trips, some air that gave up. So what's you really check calling a bet with? But again, because of the whole way that the hand played out, with the limp and with the min raise, I think that actually recreational players on these paired boards might just have, you know, ace-queen, ace-ten, ace-five, ace-deuce, those type of hands as well. Those hands would make sense for this line. In Dex's shoes, if I have a good ace, like a good kicker ace, I'd, I'd probably go for a decent-sized bet. If I have trips or better, I'd go for a big bet. As played, Dex shows up with 3-5 of clubs, which, if we're testing our theories, uh, fits the, you know, 3x ISO from the button is kind of weak. I think this hand is way too loose to isolate unless you have reads, which possibly did. I personally would be bet folding this on a flop read list, just given the fact that the guy limp called and then check min raised on this board. I'm not expecting his range to have the necessary bluffs. You know, 5-3 suited is a hand, of course it has backdoor equity, but really it's calling to, to sometimes bluff when the other guy checks, and I'm, I'm not sure that that's actually going to work out. What did Red Italian have? Of course we don't see his hand, but presumably had a jack or an ace. Somehow ace feels more likely than a jack to me given the action, but, but could be either one.
For this hand, we're actually going to go down to 500 NL, but we have a guest appearance from OTB Red Baron, the greatest of all time. This guy has been the guy to beat in poker for, for as long as I can remember, pretty much. Of course, he hasn't been playing much last few years. All of the pre-Solver era and, and for a, a decent bit of the era after Solvers came out, this, this guy was considered the top No Limit Hold'em player by far. So, BVB hand, OTB raises to 1580, Y80, who knows, he's just having fun. An ex-pastor, Keith Tox, who is a run-at-once coach, if, if I remember correctly, calls. We get 358, two-tone. Red Baron goes pretty much pot-sized bet. Very good bet size for this low board texture. The way 3-5-A two-tone works BVB is that the small blind is going to have a bunch of hands like 9s, 10s, jacks, queens, kings. And these hands really benefit from just shoveling money into the pot as fast as possible. Let's say you make a small bet, the other guy floats a lot because the board's low, then you get a turn jack and suddenly your 10s and 9s need to slow down. If you pot bet the flop and then the turn is, is a jack, you don't really care with nines. You can just keep going for stacks because your opponent can't really have a lot of jacks. He can't float you. So you actually get lot, lots of protection. It's a very effective sizing scheme for this board where OTB Red Baron would have, you know, the, the sizes based around nines, tens, jacks, ace, eight, hands like that, and, and bluffs. Turn 10 of spades, uh, we see another pot sized bet here. Again, again, in your head should be okay, OTB's, you know, following the same plan. If he turned the 10 with, with one of his bluffs, he keeps going for it. Jacks, queens, pocket nines, ace eight might still be good enough. Uh, like we said, the 10 is not going to get hit very much. Ace of spades on the river. Ace of spades in terms of what's happening to the ranges, if you think about it. OTB Red Baron, we were saying queens, jacks, 10x. Uh, does he hit the ace? Not too much. A uh, not flush draw shouldn't be playing this way. Ace do says four, probably not too often. So ace is actually not a card that OTB Red Baron hits very often. X Pastor Kitox hits it more because he has not flush draws in his range. Probably not a card Red Baron can shove, but he can still bet with something like Jax. Uh, here he goes for like 177 into 290. I don't know if this is like the ideal range size. Of course, you have to trust OTB that, that it probably is, but, but personally, for, for my range, I would probably go a bit smaller. He faces the shove, which, you know, presumably is uh, ace or better, I would imagine, to, to shove over this. Like, you have to beat pocket jacks, pretty much, to shove. And calls, and we see the hands turned up, so... OTB Red Baron has Ace-9. I don't know if that's that's a hand that's supposed to take this line. Like I said, it, it probably is, given OTB's doing it. But if I had to guess that this is not the, the hand I would I would have used. Ace-high BVB just has a lot of showdown value, and I think you need a good reason to, to turn it into a bluff like this. But yeah, re really good run out, really good river, and, and kind of magic by OTB, right? Because he value bets the river and still stacks the other guy's bluff. So I don't know if this was read-based or premeditated in any way, but, but certainly perfect outcome for him in terms of what happened in the hand. And ex pastor Kitox, you, you know that the bluff shove is okay. Well, it's not, <laughs> it's actually not okay from a technical standpoint. I think you're not supposed to bluff shove this type of hand. It's, it's not terrible, but it, it's, it's a bit bad. And, and, and maybe, you know, from a technical standpoint, I'll ask you guys a question. Like, try to think, why is Uri saying seven of clubs, nine of clubs is, is a bad bluff shove? Which hand would make a good bluff shove? If you go back, we have a video about good blockers and bad blockers on the channel which could give you guys some, some clues. Basically, what's going on here is that when you're bluff shoving on the river, you don't want to block bluffs, and you do want to block value. Blocking value is kind of tough. Not blocking bluffs, it usually helps to have a pair. So if you have a 3, if you have a 5, if you have an 8, that's one of your cards that's presumably not blocking a bluff. So if I get to the river, I would rather fold 7-9, and bluff with something like a pair of fives or a pair of eights, right? A pair of eights is is a pure bluff catcher. Why not like bluff the pair of eights, fold the seven nine of clubs? I'd even go so far as to say I would rather bluff holding diamonds because OTB should be giving up his diamonds. <laughs> and if he's giving up his diamonds, he's not bluffing with his diamonds. Then if I have diamonds, he doesn't have diamonds. It gets a bit complicated. Ho hopefully you guys can follow if not, replay the last few seconds. I think it, 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 they, they have some wisdom in them. So not the perfect technical bluff, but not, not a huge deal. 
you know what? He's he's OTB. I'm sure it's fine. Like, who, who who am I next to OTB? The guy's probably made who knows how 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 many tens of millions of dollars playing poker. Should we check? Should we check if it's fine? It's always good to sometimes ask the computer if something is fine. So let's ask the computer. We will run a BVB sim. Of course, to run these, you need to have GTO ranges, which we sell at the Gorilla Poker website. Highly recommended. Uh, and we are actually going to start adding other stake levels than the ones we have uploaded. Currently, we have live games and a 100 and L2000. So we're going to add a few more stakes. If anyone has a specific request, let me know. I'll be sure to, to get it in there as well. But yeah, extremely important to, to play and to understand poker, to have good ranges. Call it the low-hanging fruit in poker. Like this is the easiest thing you can do to gain the most win rate, even though it's not the most interesting thing. But if someone walked up to me and asked me, you know, how can I get better at poker? How can I win more money? I'd say the first thing you need to do is get good preflop ranges and, and study them and actually use them. That will make a huge, huge difference just, just starting out. First off, I was actually correct that OTB should not be potting with Ace-9. Ace-X generally is a very low frequency pot bet. You do do it at some frequency with the Ace of Diamonds. And, and, and in this sense, OTB d did kind of get it correct that there are these small leftover Ace of Diamonds. But honestly, I think this is due to me not running the sim accurately enough. Probably th these would con completely disappear if I let the sim run for a few more minutes. Ten of Spades turn. Really good turn. You improve a lot. So lots of betting. You get called and we have the Ace River. When you get to the river, as I was saying, it does make a lot of sense to size down because you want to continue betting hands like 10x and pocket jacks. But OTB's two-third sizing was a bit too big. Here I don't have all the sizings, but one-third is clearly better size. After you go one-third, villain shoves any top pair plus and some bluffs. If you go two-thirds, same idea. Well, what we can do is actually solve the river very, very accurately, and, and I'll show you guys why probably 9-7 is a bad bluff. Of course, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, so what you guys can see here is that bluff shoving with any 9-7 suited combo actually just straight up loses you money. It's one to five big blinds depending on the suit and specifically diamonds, which is what I was saying because OTB won't bluff diamonds actually does okay. And if you do want to bluff shove, the good hands to do this with, the hands that are okay to do this with, you want to have a pair and a diamond, for example. Or you want to have uh, lower cards that OTB would not have had in his range. But look, something like 3-deuce, 4-3, four 4-deuce. Four the diamond-diamond on paired hands are generally okay. But yeah, just technical mistakes. So like I was saying, it's not a huge one, but, but it, it's a real one. And it implies that the player doesn't really understand the spot, which I can't blame him for. You know, a lot of people don't understand this kind of spot. Other than choosing ace-9, which is probably a bit off, I think OTB played the hand perfect, which is to be expected. Okay, so one last OTB Red Baron hand, and we'll wrap up the video. This is another BBB hand with Sancti Y. Sancti, we'll call him, or Sanctity. Raising 2.5x OTB calls, we get 10, 4, 5, rainbow. Sancti bets 60% pot, which I think is a reasonable size. This board doesn't play the same as in 3-bet pots because BVB, the 10 hits range is very hard. So it is a, it's, it's a fairly reasonable board for Sancti. And we get the Jack of Spades turn. And Sancti bets fairly big and OTB Red Baron raises. What could OTB Red Baron value raise? Anything that he didn't raise before, so sets. But of course, anything like Jack 10, Jack 4 suited, Jack 5 suited. But the big question you need to think about is what would OTB potentially bluff raise with? Obviously, there are a bunch of candidates on the board, but thinking of them in-game is not that easy, and a lot of people don't think of, of them in-game and just play call fold. But I'm sure OTB Red Baron has both ranges. So we have a raise and a call. River 5 of clubs. Sancti checks. OTB Red Baron shoves. Now 5 of clubs changes things a bit. Jack 10 now loses to over pairs. I don't know if that's a big deal. Jack 4 is now no longer good to continue. All the other two pair plus, of course, are now boats. So OTB has Jack 10. Makes sense on the flop, makes sense on the turn. On the river, is it too thin or not? Depends on what you think Sancti will do with his over pairs. Like how often does he reach the river with aces, kings, queens, etc.? Or is he just going to have a jack? Sancti has pocket aces, which flop good, turn 
good maybe shove over the, the race sometimes. And river, of course you have to call, of course you have to call. And this is extremely important. Whenever you're facing a bluff catching decision on the river, right? When you check and the red baron shops with aces, you have a bluff catching decision. The first question you have to ask yourself is, do I beat any of my opponent's value range? And if the answer is ever yes, unless your opponent is absolutely terrible face up and never bluffs, you just click call. It's just the way poker works. Here, of course, we're seeing OTB Red Baron show up with Jack-10. Could he show up with Ace-Jack? I don't know. Will everyone show up with Jack-10? I don't know. I think Aces just has to call. You know, that, that's just how the, how the spot works. To find a fold, you would need to tell yourself, A, my opponent is not bluffing, and, and B, my opponent is, is not going for value with worse. And that's tough. It's, it's a rare situation, so you can't really fold Aces. Of course, here he wins with Aces, so I think well played hand by both. That's it for this video. There are actually a bunch of other six max hands I'm happy to, I'll probably cover a few more of them in the next few videos. If you haven't yet, check out the Gorilla Poker website. We have a course about how to improve your red line. We have the all important GTO preflop ranges. Like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys next time.